Here so we'll do announcements while she does that thing. Yeah. Okay. We'll do. I'll do. I'll start with. Okay. Mine. You have any, Gabriel? Huh? Any announcements you're gonna be making? No. Not really. Wait, can we get this so are we? We're not officially. It's, on. it's over the thing back already? there. There you go. We're gonna do announcements first. We're on already. We're on oh, already. Oh, wow. all right. Hey, folks, welcome back to the brand new episode of the Trailer Park Show. It is um, actually we're a few minutes early. I'm surprised, which yeah. is amazed. I'm amazed at that. Keep you on yet? So we're on. We're on. Yes. Yay! <laughs> so we so we're having fun. We're, we're we we are so excited to be here that we decided to to start the show early because That's it, we yeah. can. Because we because ha- we can because we can exactly so um, so we want to welcome everybody here on. on, on I think the... actually that's a technical glitch that put us on this early. No, we, we can't say that it's a technical glitch. Okay, why? Everything else is. Yeah, that Go ahead and introduce us well, out here. Well, Pokey, okay, we'll go ahead and let you do that part today. All okay. right, uh, me and Carino, of course, and Paul Hernandez. Mm-hmm. We've yeah. usually been on opposite sides about all battles way back to the seventies. As you recall, of course, me and Gavino used to be on opposite sides about most battles, too. And we still are. We still are. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Working together on the things we agree on, we can make more progress that way. That's right. And uh, you I know did, you've been you a, take what it counts. Tim Boone, I know you, uh, Paul has been around since, like, the 70s. Brown Beret and all that. Here he is. Bring your chair in here. Come on in here, my car girl. Yeah, Paul has been around since the 70s. We're going to put up some, what is it you're going to put, a clip of what? We're going to put some videos up early. We're getting ready to do a a race relations show on the 17th. Uh, And since we're not going to do the back to school bash show tonight, we'll just just talk some about that too. Coming up we'll have uh, Nelson Lender and Mike Lee will be on for the 17th and maybe one or two others, but I'm not going to try to get too big. Just us. Paul will be here. Yep. Uh, Mr. Cargill, Woo-hoo. hello, sir. He'll be here too. Of course, me and me and Gabriel are. Uh, Wait, and there's me on the show uh, on the show right now. So since yeah, yeah, decided, he's on the show right Pogi, now too. Spoken to decided to neglect me over here. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, it's the whole migrant thing. Right? I'm telling you. So just to give you guys a heads up, in two weeks we're gonna have the what what I. What I'm going to be calling is uh, "Make the White Man Cry" episode. Uh-oh. Uh oh. This is all. This, all this all started, folks, just to give you guys a little bit of a prehistory. Uh, there was a video out there concerning um, an interview with uh, a gentleman who's African American, a Korean American, and a Native American, mm. and they're all talking mm. to a gentleman who happens to be white, and they were are they were complaining, or in my opinion, they were complaining about all the problems that they were experiencing, and they were blaming it on one group of people. Ooh. <laughs> That's what? Uh, oh yeah, when, uh, the video that, that we were talking uh, about. Robert D'Artagnan Thomas. Well, I posted a video about why why the white man's so bad and, and how you can make a white man cry. So, <laughs> so we we had this uh, back and forth. Uh, well, hold on, it it started out with you know they're all doing their oh yeah this is so great that we can all talk like this. I say hold on, all I saw was blame white man, <laughs> and that of course pissed off a bunch of people. And, anyway. And it, <laughs> and then it kind of went forward from there, and then I, I jumped in and, and uh, gave my, my two cents, and nobody liked what I was saying. Nobody liked so, what you said either. Yeah, nobody yeah. liked what I had to say, but that's okay. That's part of what my life is. Yeah. You know, okay. I, I speak my mind, and everybody goes away. So that's that's what's going to be happening that's, in two weeks. So, yeah, so I just said, right. hey, I'll put my stuff in my mouth, is, and we'll just have a show about it. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have quite a few things happening. As you know, school's going to just around the corner. There's a first. Yeah, we're supposed to be doing announcements right now. Right. This is the first week of uh, weekend of tax free. So yeah. if you're going to go. Is it really? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, this set. For what? For buying, you know, you buy school, clothes, school supplies. School. And there's a whole list of things that you when can. When start? start Monday? Today? No, this weekend. It started this past weekend. No, it starts. It will occur it will this, start weekend. this weekend. So it'll start on Saturday? Yes, okay. on Saturday. Also on Saturday, Why August, you up a little closer there, Mike? on August the fifteenth, August the fifteenth at the Palmer Convention Center, yeah. AISD will hold their uh, annual back to school, and uh-huh. basically you can uh, parents and kids uh, can go there and get the free school Should pack. Can I go somewhere with that one? School Let's supplies. See, now, and all these neighbor, neighborhoods in mine, uh, they're having a back to school bash out in Dove Springs Rec Center coming up. Between that and this, this back to school bash, mm-hmm. why do you buy any school supplies? And they'll just give it, away. If you'll go to the AISD yes, website, uh, it'll give you more information, and there will be buses picking up parents at certain schools. But visit their website, and and we'll go ahead and uh, and uh, alert you uh, all. But uh, it's free. Yeah, it's and free. We sh- and uh, they have many other bo- information booths around there about 
uh, you know, if you need information on immunization, you need information on registration and things like that. So but it's only for AISD students. Yes, it's only for AISD students, and this is we, we're on record promoting public schools. So uh, we cannot be. Uh, yeah, but we pr promote all public schools. Right, we promote all schools uh, to begin with. Uh, we also have, uh, like I mentioned uh, last week, if you live north of Willow, on the on the east boundary is Pe uh, Pleasant Valley, and on the west is Chicon, and then the river. If you own a home, if you're a homeowner in that area, uh, Austin Housing Finance Corporation is going to implement the last $1.2 million of the Holly Home Repair Program, thanks to you. That's about and, a lot of loss. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> but we're asking the city uh, again. Austin Housing Finance Corporation came out with their own recommendations on how to spend the 1.2 million, and they're basically saying do cosmetic, what we call cosmetic weather station and whatnot. Since these are the last funds we'll be receiving, we're advocating that they reconstruct nine new homes at $130,000 each, and that will keep the families in the neighborhood for 30 years. Uh, as you know, the council's been, uh, you know, talk, us, talking us. a lot about affordable we housing. We can't gentrify anymore, or what? Right. This this is an anti-gentrification tool. So well, all you those. You know, if you had done it my way to begin with, you wouldn't have needed that anyway. Well, you see, I lost. That's one of the battles we lost. Well, that's that's. I lost. Yeah, my party. That, that's history, on your part. We moving right along. But anyway, uh, you know, government. Once it, government is so bureaucratic. You know, it's only 1.2 million. Only? Uh, well, compared to other, you know, uh, projects that the city operates, Austin Housing Finance Corporation, but they want want to farm out that 1.2 million to nonprofits. These are friends of the of uh, you know, Austin Housing Finance staff. What happens when you do that is that out of the 1.2 million, they're going to charge interest for administration fees. So of course. that's almost 100, 200 thousand dollars. That's one home that you could replace in the neighborhood mm. in that area that the mayor and everybody whine, you know, talks about they're so concerned about. And uh, But anyway, I'm speaking at Citizens Communication this Thursday. No, oh boy. What, about, what uh, about contracting with um, a few companies and then doing like $20,000 per home to, you know, beautify well, the outside of well, the that's the city's, even more Well, that's the city's pitch. The, the downside on that is that uh, – you know, they can't get their cut. Well, well, no, no, is that you? You still have a home. Right. You still have a home. Basically, what they do is a, we had Clint we, Smith on recently. So we, I'm talking that way. We, we have we have no, homes. There's no reach around. And, and, no reach and, around there. Huh? <laughs> we have homes that are that are beyond the the weather no station Christmas. limit. No girls here tonight. You, know, huh? <laughs> you could weatherize. I mean, what are you going to do with twenty thousand? Put a two doors. Except in the door. audience. It mm -hmm. is very expensive. You know. So uh, we feel it's just like, you know, you're doing it already. Austin Housing Finance Corporation already has this program, the home repair, the home replacement program. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel? It's only, not, it's only nine homes. It's in a targeted area. Let's get it done. Let's get it. You get out of here and Careful. we get out of here. Let's I'm going on this one. Go ahead and do it. I mean, but city staff makes it, makes something very simple so difficult. It's your job. You know, and, and, and I, it? I'm saying, wow, you know. <laughs> but anyway. If you live within that area, they're starting to take applications, apply, because this is monies that were made available as part of the mitigation for the Holly Home Repair Program, and we will not see any more of these funds anymore. That'll be it. And I'll finish with this. I was listening to my President Obama today, mm -hmm. yes, sir, and he had, they had a, he had a press conference on one of the most famous issues of your party. Which yeah. is? Uh, which one was that? The, what do you call it? The, yeah. huh? the greenhouse? Yeah, the greenhouse effect, mm -hmm. the ozone or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's interesting because when he was speaking, here's a liberal dog, yellow dog, Democrat, Travis County, all no, the way. He's beyond that. He's even, okay. Right, go ahead. And I'm listening to him as he speaks of why we should, you know, protect the ozone and why we should do this. And then he mentions that the most polluting item or thing. Or cows. No, our power plants. Okay. And that power plants are three thirds, or well, I don't know, of the contributing factor to this ozone and whatever. 
And here I am. I'm saying, oh my God, and we live for 30 years under the sun. <laughs> we're yeah. not even. Hey, we're not even up there. We're yeah. down here. That was one you of know? the most efficient plants we had. We were down here, you know. So does that mean we're going to so, go for nuclear energy now? I, I don't hope know. so. Well, no, we already have nuclear energy with yeah, the but South. We, but we're not doing, but we're they're not, not doing building any more nuclear plants. We're not, we're not using nuclear energy properly. We can do fission. Right. Which will allow us to have the highest efficiency of, of energy available and be able to do a lot more when it comes to, you know, going to this, involving the space race. Can you imagine what we would be able to do right now if we actually used fission power? Yeah. We could gentrify the moon. Or exactly. Anywhere. Mars, gone right now. We would have been already yeah. We would have been well, planting the flag right there the, right the, now. The most natural Earth gas. Too. The most natural, natural gas is great. Taking care of. The yeah. most natural gas. I'm a gas co not cost it's, not, it's not the hot air. It's not hot air. I'll the tell hot you that. Hot air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on. I think Pac had some announcements too. He's had a, some couple, some great radio shows. If y'all hadn't heard them, that last week was really good. There you go. Yep. Uh, we got a, a, a musical band coming to uh, 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 Hills Cafe soon. Yes. On Wednesday. On Wednesday night of this week, we're gonna have a JB and the Moonshine band. All right. JB and the Moonshine Band. They're going to be playing at Hills Cafe. They're also doing a um, little event to promote the band. They're going to do a like, little raffle, and then people can find that on Central Texas Gunworks' uh, Facebook page. They can sign up for that. Uh, where they're going to there you go. get it. You'll get an opportunity to shoot with the to fire uh, a 12 gauge shotgun, a rifle, mm. and a 45 mm. with the Ooh, JB boy. and the Moonshine Band. Rifle mm. M16. Uh, AR-15, that's right. And that, that name of the band seems like folks that want to hang us, hang us back in the yeah, day. Oh, yeah, oh, got this oh, idea. Y'all got this oh, opinion of white folks, like, you know. No. So, no, you just bring your own body. You know what? I, it already reminds me of the, the show, The Deliverance. Oh, uh, Lord. <laughs> See, that's, you watch too much Hollywood. Yeah. Yep. That's what that is. Yep. Ain't uh, got no time to watch TV. Yeah. So, but anyway, those are the things that are happening. and uh, We're going to have to have us a show on this energy one of these days. School's just around, uh, and what else? That's, that's, oh, we, we, that well, last announcement. Well, oh, okay, no, yeah, this, uh, it's not an announcement. This, well, it is an announcement in news. The uh, proposed hotel in East Austin. That's y'all had that stuff. Was drawn, right. They withdrew, so it won't be going to council this Thursday like it was scheduled to. But the issue that is on at council is uh, spring farms. Or the farms. Where we had a little party at? Yeah, they want to have 30 to 40 uh, weddings. and Where well, your friend got married? Oh, that oh, one. Oh, Lord. That oh, one. that one. That one. So uh, right now the our, neighborhood. Our school board friend that your people uh, uh, elected? I was <laughs> the, the neighborhood. The neighborhood surrounded. Party. There was nothing. There was Democrats elected. The homeowners around the, the, the area are uh, against it. They have a valid petition. So. Ain't nobody happened. lives around there. Now, what yeah, about Shady? Yeah, yeah, that's right on Gonzalez, and yeah. Allen is right in the back. And then, yeah. you, and then you remember Bruce Pice? Yeah, that's oh, across home. the street. Yeah, they're there ain't homes no, all, they're homes all there are no other there. homes back there. Yeah. But. Now, what about the um, the issue of the smokestacks for the barbecue joints? What's up with that? I thought we had a good city council that was going to get Do rid of all this serious. ignorant stuff. Well, I, was gonna, I think they'd be working something more serious. So what? just let them. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna because they're gonna shut down some of the barbecue places, right? Let them right? shut down barbecue places because barbecue smoke. That's okay. That's good. Let them go ahead and shut them down. Yep. And when they shut down, uh, what's that? What's that? That famous barbecue place there on 12th Street? Oh yeah. What is it? What's it called? You know it. Franklin's. 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 Yeah. So when they when thank they you, man. yeah thank you. So when they shut down Franklin's, we're gonna open up another gun store right there. Yeah. And then and then we'll have uh, some yeah we'll that's a good idea yeah that's they ain't yeah. gonna get started so in the world yeah, exactly. you heard it first yeah. right here that's folks. right so go ahead and yeah. go ahead and shut Texas, down the barbecue joint Central Texas right. Gunworks store number two yeah we'll open up a gun Central store, store. the Central oh. store well, can I mention uh, today's event even though we didn't go to it yeah Richard Franklin Rick, Richard Franklin announced today ah. at the victory uh, he's grill. been on the show before he's been on the show he'll he's be run, again he's running for Travis County Commissioner Precinct one. This show does not endorse or support candidates. We only encourage people to get involved. Especially not Democrats. Part huh? <laughs> no, they're, uh, well, they're already handing it over to somebody already, aren't they? Participate so. and vote. He's been anointed with oil and everything. And vote yeah. And, uh, Richard so, Franklin, yeah, he sure has. No, not Richard. Well, no, 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 not him. He's, 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 he's not the other guy. The other guy's been anointed party. with oil and everything. No. no. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't even you know, think, can't think know, of his name right now. I'll stick with Richard then. No. No, no, no. No, go ahead. James is the one I, well, not, I'm not going to mention it. I just know that 
there are others that are popping up. You know, I think there's four right now yeah, that are. Oh, are they? Travis County Commissioner. For Commissioner uh, one. Yes. Oh, uh, nice. Lofton, the guy that ran for council. Oh, okay. Lofton, well, he's, Richard. He's one of my people, ain't he? Samson. Samson's going to run again. Samson. Samson. What's the name sound familiar? He ran last time. For he commissioner? Was, yeah, he was endorsed okay. by uh, the American Statesman and uh, the NAA, former NAACP. Um, Nelson Linder? No, the other one. The former. Yeah, former. Oh, he has been in forever. Yeah, we were talking about him. Former. Oh, the state guy? No. He works for Austin Energy right now. Yeah. I'll, the former NWC. Nelson Linder been in forever. No, there was one before him. Mm. We just talked about it right now. I don't know. They're so inefficient. So I, like I can't 80s. remember their names. Yeah, so. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he's real you friends with Bledsoe. But anyway, those are the four that are running right now that I know of. Mm -hmm. And there may be, I don't know if Gonzalez from uh, Round Rock or Flugelville that ran last time. Okay. He also ran last time. He okay. was a Latino that ran. That'd be, ex that'd be exciting. Yeah, they need it. We need someone good and and. and in that precinct, that yeah. commissioner one. Spot. Well, I'll say that Richard is probably the most grassroots and most qualified. He's a former Del Valley School Board member. Yeah, I he's mean, been he's, involved in a lot yeah, of activity. Because the person known. that we have there now is kind of senile, isn't he? Well, that's why he's not running again. Okay, that's he's good. Kind of yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, but you ready, Bob? But Richard, Richard <laughs> is uh, the most qualified and has had govern governing experience. And uh, being a former school board member, yeah, of he Valley, has been. Uh, he's grassroots. He's from the neighborhood. <coughs> he's and, been involved uh, in a lot of community mm -hmm. activities. So he's been all over the place. Yeah, he, he not another community activist. No, act community organizer. There you go. So he'll he'll be a good. Uh, he is, up to my opinion, based on the ones that are out there, I'd say he's probably the best. What you do for a living now? He's a school teacher. What was he? No, he has a program like uh, the Harvest Program, the Men Boys or something like that. I don't know. There's a program, a, a syllabus, a curriculum that talks about empowering young men. And he does a lot of spill on that. And he has a contract. He has a program, a syllabus. I don't know what it's called, to tell you the truth. But he's very involved in youth, uh, youth leadership and youth development and mentoring. His wife is on the Del Valley School Board. Okay, she yeah. is. I knew one of them yeah, was. she's on the school board at Del Valley when he... Uh, uh, she ran when when he went to run for commissioner, and he didn't run, run anymore. For uh, so, well, October or so, we should be back up on the air pretty good, and then we will uh, probably have him on. Well, yeah. you know, the the p police relationship in our community has always been an ongoing issue. It's not I mean, getting better. No, well, you know, so you're in Austin? No, today, we're getting better, but not the cops. Today, unfortunately, you know, it has 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 uh, risen to you gotta move over to the, to the right to place. a worse worse situation. I've never seen it this bad, where you see so many young uh, African American kids being killed by cops I, I, nationwide. Big, uh, yeah, big big kudos to uh, the Cedar Park Police Department uh, when yeah, they responded to that one little incident couple weeks ago where um, a guy was barricaded into his home and they actually were able to de-escalate that situation without any shots being fired so big kudos to them you know because I you know whenever Austin Police Department responds anywhere it ends a different way yeah well we can uh yeah because I don't go for all that either some of these kids again I'll be the cop what the hell you think's gonna happen well law, like, law enforcement aside Race relations as it relates to you guys and me and everybody else besides the, without law enforcement there. Well, how do y'all think that fits today? How do you think that's going today? Is there a big rift or between us all or can we unite somehow or? Yeah, we just need to, they just need to do a little more of a conflict <laughs> resolution, a little more of actually being able to okay. talk to individuals and try to calm the situation down rather than trying to escalate that situation to the next level because it's it's really easy for me to jump out into a situation and irritate someone and 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 make them angry and escalate it to the next level but it takes you know some energy to actually try to calm that situation down and say okay well, I see you're having a bad day well let me let me figure out you know how can we you know work through this you know it's very easy I've been in a lot of different situations and I've my, my biggest fear, down. my biggest fear is actually being pulled over by a police officer. That's oh, my yeah, biggest fear. I can fear. understand I mean, that. <laughs> I, I, mean, I get bad has guys. The fear of being pulled over. Yeah. And recently I saw a posting on Facebook that somebody sent me about, this is your rights for when you're pulled over. Right. Okay? Right. I said, 
Okay, you have those rights to do that, but believe me, I'd rather do yes, sir, no, sir, and a, and do what he asked me to do right. instead of try to pull any of that because you pull any of that, your butt's going to be right. in trouble. Right. right. You know, Absolutely. why are you pulling me over? Are you detaining me? Don't start. Yeah, I don't, Just yeah. yes, sir, no, yeah, sir. Yeah, I don't go into any of that well, stuff. You know, uh, oh, there's a, a place on Cerza Chavez and Comar named Peacock. Okay. okay, it's a fluent wine. Now it's a wine-consuming pizza. Hipster. Right. Now, that yeah. corner, in that corner, there's a big old sign that says uh, no consumption, no alcohol. alcohol consumption on, on, the street. on the streets. Now, my buddies <laughs> back in the day, they knew when they were walking, oh, my God, when I reach over there, I need to put my can up because uh -huh. now I'm entering this area. Right. Or when they would pass it, uh, now I can have a drink. Yeah. Okay. Today, I went by there. Uh, the other day, I was by there, and there were some, how many of your folk out there? Young <laughs> <laughs> All, all, on, the side, side, all <laughs> on the sidewalk, drinking all up. What is that? And I asked, all and I hipsters. said, hey, can't you read? And they said, they looked at the sign, they started getting sarcastic. No, no, we Thank can't you. read, you know. And I said, oh, okay. So I called 311, and yeah. I, you know. They said, hey, what's up, you know? My buddies used to get busted for two hundred fifty dollar tickets for open container violation. Right, right. Is this white privilege? And but look at this. <laughs> I get to drink on the street. This. They came out. Okay. And they gave them the, you know, verbal. Yeah. But you know what they did not do? Take them to the store. Ticket? They give a ticket. No. Nope. Mm. They did not ask for identification. Oh wow. Huh. They didn't. They didn't run anybody. They did check. Not, they check for warrants. They did nothing. Not didn't check anything. for. IDs. And I'm well, going, wow. Oh, and here I am over there fishing with a friend of mine, and I get corralled by two policemen. And, and, they, were not, they, and they want ah, your fishing permit, ah, they want ah, your ID, ah, they want and your and papers. Said, you know, I asked Acevedo, why, why Acevedo? He said, well, you may never know someone called him on you. I said, yeah. Two right. just down by the way. Well, 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 I, I, I who the hell you with Doc? But it's always, you know, because it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I don't know, sometimes. I, I remember I back in 1974, I mean, and it probably even goes beyond that, uh, when the uh, Santo Rodriguez case, mm -hmm. a young man got shot in uh, yeah, up in Dallas. Dallas Russia years old. 12 years old, man. Will you talk about the Brown Beret thing that, that year? Remember they brought a court, his case? Uh, yeah, they brought his case to I mean, Austin, and uh, we had a uh, picket line going, and... I've never seen so many cops in one place. And they weren't there uh, to, you know, be greedy to the poor kids. They were there to hassle the rest of us. Uh, Y'all were brown braids. Yeah. Man, they need an army out there to control. Yeah. How many of you were I, there, doesn't it? I tell you, man, uh, no, I, got, we, I got to stop one time. No, and uh, the that, cops. That, excuse me. That day we had the whole Capitol grounds full of brown boys. Yeah. Damn. Because all I, over the I, place, huh? I, I was uh, selected to present a wreath at the state capitol yeah. steps in uh, in memory of uh, Santo Rodriguez. Yeah. And it was, what, over 200? 200, 200. Maybe more brown berets from yeah. all over the state of Texas. Yeah. I'm maybe 300. Yeah. I never wait for you to cause trouble. Yeah. Oh, now, man. here's the other issue I've been having lately. But is we have a council member that's a former brown beret. Well, Yep. Which one? Bill. And, and what is he doing? Oh, that's right, And Bill. what is he doing? Yeah, he's a real friend. Tell you, man, Nothing. He... Why? Because well, he ain't got no mem membership has his privileges. Let's just put it this way. <laughs> I've always said this before. Membership has his privileges. And now he's part of the he's part of the privilege. Yeah, group. now he's part of the She's privilege okay. class. Yeah, give him a chance. These are newbies still. They're still <laughs> new in there. They still gotta learn the thing. But now the other thing that I've been seeing on Facebook and stuff about race relations and stuff. I don't know if you've heard this guy that He's what, supposed to be like the president of the, of the Black Panthers out there, and some other. He uh, wants to kill crackers and their babies. And, and, and black leaders of some of these groups <coughs> calling on doing violence to people. Mm -hmm. Now, if I stood up there and I preached, hey, let's go murder this or kill these people and well, rape their women, blah, 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 I'd be put up for a hate crime. How are these people getting away with saying all this stuff of, and, and inciting people into violence? That's called black privilege. For and not getting in trouble for it. Mm. That's black you know? privilege. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, it's it's okay to you know protest and do things. You know, do things the way that we do things. You know, mm -hmm. we learn from our past and stuff. But for these young mm -hmm. people to be up there telling them to do violence and, and stuff like that, I just don't get uh, it. Go ahead, on Antonio. Go. Yep. No. <laughs> 
Why don't you play number one and then we'll come back to it? That's like five minutes. Well, but go ahead, Paul. We cut you off. Go you you were talking Paul. about the Brown Berets and that right. time they came out here. Yeah. and uh, We had uh, Brown Berets from all over the state of Texas. And we had also, we had, were accompanied by DPS, the Texas Rangers, Austin Police, there was the County Police. There's 50 one of you guys, right? Right. I mean, I've never seen so many in one place. I'm, I'm and surprised they could walk with their little Dallas, escorts. <laughs> In Dallas, the Brown Rays had, had a similar march, and they got, they pissed off enough people that people turned over a car and set it on fire, a cop car. In Dallas? In Dallas, <laughs> yeah, because people are getting tired, and it's like, it started that way again, all over the country. Yeah, that was back in the early 80s, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I was in seven, seventies, early seventies. You know, it seems like every year and every year, every year, our our police departments, not only here but throughout the country, get more and more ma ma how do you say military. Military. Yeah, yeah, military. Yeah, militaristic. Yeah, military. Well, who who, who gave them the, who gave them the equipment? We do as taxpayers. No, no. Who gave them the equipment? The military. The federal government did. Yeah. Who was in charge first? of the federal government when that rule was well, passed? Obama. Obama. Yeah. Well, it's been we had good. all this equipment. We had all this equipment that, that we that we took that we had a, that we were using in these wars. Mm -hmm. Okay, that they said, okay, we got to do something with it. Somebody, somebody, somebody's bright idea was said, hey, let's go ahead and give it to let's go ahead and give it to the to the uh, to the police just in case. You never know if they're gonna need it. And boom, what did they do? They got grants to go ahead and, and, and give this this equipment away, and they started painting them in all nice pretty colors. And guess what? They started using them on people. You say that one, and where, I where remember seeing the picture of the four wheeler recently with the guns like this on it, going around. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little four wheeler vehicle with the like the well, Gatling I mean, guns well, on it. Instead of, instead of using them, instead of saving them and using them for for something else, maybe yeah, that maybe upcoming. You know, they give it to the, they give it to the people that are supposed to defend us. Well, our armies are uh, protecting all so. over the world. Somebody's got to protect They're us. They're getting somewhere. carried away now. Why, why do we? Uh, why, why? Why is it that it relationship with Austin Police Department continues to be not on the same page? Or our relationship with the police? Well, it's never been. I'm 69 years old, and I've never seen a good relationship with the cops. Uh, anybody comes up to the house with a suit on, we go hide. <laughs> <laughs> think, hey man, it's the cops. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you know, you could kind of laugh about it now, but yeah. you know, it's serious. It's very serious. Uh, it, it's serious because you know, things things go on, and you know. I still can't. Stuff happens. I still can't figure out why they are so reluctant to doing. Community policing, getting off the car, walking down that block, walking it's down hot that outside street. Because they're scared. Have you been out there in the summer? It's hot. Well, I mean, hey. They're scared of us. It don't seem. Not have living town. It seems so. to me like, with Acevedo, you know, more helicopters, more this, more that, and I say, oh my God, what are you preparing for? Turn you know? into, it's trying to turn into L.A. It's trying to turn yeah. into yeah. police chases and, and, and stuff from? like that. Hello, in LA. There you go. So. So yeah. you want to control, in case we get so pissed off. And what they're doing, I mean, I'm talking about all kinds of people getting pissed off about what's going on today. Now, the police have been arming themselves for the day when there's urban warfare, and that's what they're taking care of. Right and who's there. the one that started all this? This all, this all hullabaloo about that. The urban warfare. It's been started. About, about no, but, but we, when did it start? Right? When did all this stuff start rising? Escalating. Escalating. When all of a sudden people were starting talking to, to Congress, when people started talking to Congress and saying you got to watch out for these for these white people with guns, yeah, mm -hmm. better watch out. And it's not necessarily the white people with guns. They were they were actually saying, oh, sorry, the white conservatives with guns. And it's not people. It's not the white conservatives that are doing all the shooting up and off. Who's, who's the one? Who's the one that shot up? Who's the one that shot up the 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 uh, police station? Yeah, that it was, was a white liberal. Well, liberal. It was a white liberal. Mexican who was the, the last one? Who was the guy from Louisiana? That did the shoot that did the shooting at the school. I mean did oh, the shooting at the movie. He was an Obama supporter. Yeah. yeah. Well, look who who did the U T Tyre Whitman. He was a white man. There you go. Probably yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah he was probably a Republican. Republican. Yeah. That was the thing, because there was that U T. <laughs> yeah. He was a Republican. I don't I don't think I don't think it's a race issue. I think it's more it's with the, the problems that we're having back and forth with law enforcement, it's going to be the problem with law enforcement having a certain type of mentality. Their mentality is, and their attitude is actually, you know, a little mm -hmm. different. 
and they'd have a lot less patience with mm -hmm. civilians. And then also on the other side, it, it's a two-way street. We also have to have respect for law enforcement as well. You know, you got to know how to, you know, you should know how to speak yeah. to another person, you know, with respect. So it kind of goes both ways. But being that that officer is a professional and being with the Austin Police Department, such a highly paid police officer, you know, you should be willing to actually try to, um, you know, use conflict resolution to calm the situation down. Really, I believe it's a uh, class situation. Because I ain't seen no rich, fat cat being killed by cops yet. Well, he don't usually go out and act a fool either. Yeah. Well, in Oklahoma they, they, they do. In Oklahoma they do. They, I mean, they, yeah, they, they do. Know know they do. do. Remember that what guy? We, that I'll take it out in Westwood or something like that. What we can do is we can demand that our police officers live in the community. That's not they in, should not be. in Round Rock. Yeah. You know, not you know somewhere else. They live in, live in East Austin. You know, live in the area that they're. I policing. think it was Round and I think Rock that would offered the tax abatements to their police department if they stay in town. Right. And once you hit Williamson County line, it's a whole other mentality. And, but you know they won't do it. You know they won't live in, in the town because it's just too darn expensive. Well, it's that, and everybody will come over here and you but, take but care of this. But what about farming. them just treating people like you people. With, res <coughs> with respect, regardless it's, of where you live, regardless of where you it's come from? It's the Democrats I that mean, have called all this with their lawyers. Cops well, going to get no, sued no matter what well, he does. I'll agree with you to a certain extent. He's going to get sued no matter what it, he does. It's a cop's union. No, but then you okay. see that video of that recent union. woman. You know who runs that APD? Over. You know who runs APD? Yes. The president of the, the union. So he hasn't returned on my calls yeah. like the last one, Wayne Vincent. Yeah. Well, you Wayne Vincent been on the show a couple times. Wrong. And he's who runs the town. Well, well he's the one. That, he's actually the one that actually runs the police. When it comes to all, when it comes to the union, the, the, officer, the police yeah. force, it's actually the union, the head of the union yeah. that makes all the calls. I, I will say this for us, he has tried to get rid of bad people. I'm not going to deny yeah, that part. That, well, that's one of his. That's one of the kudos I can give him. That one, uh, that one DPS officer that had put that poor woman that supposedly did suicide in jail. That video there, that was so way. That officer was way out of control. Oh well, yeah. Uh, and people like that need to be yanked. Yo, boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, it, it's not right. The way that no. he treated that woman for, for having a cigarette in her car and... Well, he had that, that on his radio show we, talk, we talked about that it on the... Yeah, yeah, we yeah talk, he talked about that on Come and Talk it last well, Sunday. It was, yeah, we talked about that well, on the radio show, and basically what they said was, hey, you know, an officer can't ask you to put your cigarette out because that cigarette can be used as a weapon. A person can flick that cigarette into that officer's face. So, you know... So he was justified in asking her to put out the cigarette. Same, and the same reason that they would ask you not to use your pen, you know, or, or yeah. something in your hand, because anything in your hand can be used as a weapon, you know, thrown at the police officer. So that would be why, you know, they would ask him, ask the person to do that, or to step out of the vehicle to sign the warning, you know, well, ticket know or I citation or whatever. Cooperate, you ain't got no problems. Right. Well, the fact is that, uh, you know, they forget that they're public servants. Number one, and number two is the fact that. They don't give a damn whether you like it or not. They're going to come in with their attitude, and some are going to come in without it. And then knowing, and knowing, that, and knowing yeah. that she was in a bad mood anyway, you know, he could have taken a different approach yeah. to try to calm that down a little bit. Oh, well, you know, well, what's going on, man? And she was like, she said, you know, well, I'm upset because you, you know, I, I moved to get out of your way because you were coming up on me so fast. I didn't want you to run me over, so that's why I pulled over. And now you're pulling over and giving me a ticket. You know, then, you know, so he, she's frustrated. So, no dispute uh, resolution on that child. So, well, so then all, all he had to do was say, oh, okay, well, you know, well, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just going to give you a warning. You know, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to give you a ticket or anything like that, so there's nothing you have to pay. So we just please sign this, and then we can go on about our way. Well, see, that attitude is reinforced, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's reinforced yeah. daily. They're, they're, yeah, because it was like, get, you control. know what? Put your cigarette out. Get out of the vehicle. That's, you know, yeah. that's not going to calm the situation now. That's just going to irritate her. Now she's really going to be upset, and this is going to go up and up and up. It, it's interesting to see when they reach that kind of – I remember what the, the saying is when they pushed her – the hot button, yeah. if you will. That. They get all upset. Well, not only that, but then all everything comes, everything comes out forward. You know, the races and and, and, and uh, I'm authority and you're not. And I mean, and then I have a pistol and you don't. And man, it's I just, got the badge and you don't. <laughs> well, I don't trust them as far as I throw them. I can throw them, so that's I why. Try to, I try I, to see both sides now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, just I, cooperate, it's good. But then on the other hand. Uh, you're free to go as soon as I see your papers. Yeah. Where does all this lead to? Well, you know, keep let, me give, like a, let me give you an example. I went to uh, something out there in Del Valley on the way back. Uh, had to stop at a little store, you know, the diabetic thing. You got to 
get a candy or something. Yeah. So I went off, got on, went in, came out real quick, put my wallet on the seat, you know. So as I drove off, you know, put my seat, but as I drove off, I drove off, I got to the light intersection and, you know, the highway. Yeah. So this light takes quite a while. So while I'm there, I say, well, I'll open the candy and I'll put my wallet in, you know. So I take off my seatbelt and I do this. And at this time, there's a DPS stops right there. <laughs> okay. So what he catches is me looking up there and me putting the seatbelt. <laughs> Thinking that you probably looked up at him so and put your seatbelt. When I, the light turns green, sure enough, he, woo, he stops it. He sees some money, that's all he's saying. And, and there, when I he stops me and he approaches me, he says, uh, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Hide something? You trying to hide it? You didn't think I didn't see you? I said, wait a minute, where are you going? I said, what are you doing? You know, yeah. I, and I explained to him what I was doing, but he was already a hothead, and he said, you think I didn't see what you were trying to do? Uh, already, you know, judge, jury, and the whole nine yards right there. Tempo. You know, that's why. So I, then why, then now I can see why. Some young kids, I mean, even I Because they don't know how to respond. Yeah. They don't know how to respond yeah. back. I'll tell you what, we might have to keep this, because uh, my, my next week's show kind of got canceled, now we're open for the 10th. And so we might just keep on with the racism stuff. I really want to see this film on number one, if we can. Are you ready? ready? Yeah, the girls' show from the 10th uh -oh. is off to, uh, all right, go ahead, put some volume on it. Okay. Hands Up Don't Shoot became a rallying cry in protests across the country before most people realized it, that it wasn't true. Police brutality is real, but it is not racial. It is just that the black victims are the only ones treated as national stories. Race baiters, liberals, and the media are the real racists, stirring up the populace with hand-picked stories. Stories, by the way, which shouldn't even be controversial at all. Officer Darren Wilson, for example, was innocent due to evidence, including blood splatter, along with eyewitnesses claiming there never was a Michael Brown with his hands up. Only one that attacked the police officer to the point of bull rushing him and reaching into his vehicle to strike him. Why build a protest on this case? It makes no sense. In Cleveland, you have a 12-year-old boy shot for holding a toy gun at a public park. Now that's a case to protest. Clearly, all boys should have the right to play at a park without getting killed by the police. But not nearly as much reporting was done on this tragic story, as was the Michael Brown case, which was built on a lie. There never was, hands up, don't shoot. It wasn't true. But there you have liberals and many poor blacks backing up this fantasy story, with White House officials showing up to Michael Brown's funeral, a criminal who physically intimidated a store clerk while robbing him and then attacking the police officer in his vehicle. Obama in February invited Trayvon Martin's family to the White House. Really? A case where the media toted around a picture of a little baby boy? When in reality, this was Trayvon Martin. And for Zimmerman, talk about the media rushing to judgment before they saw an actual picture of him. How many times did we hear about a white male, Zimmerman? This guy isn't white by any standard. How about the parents of the alleged revenge killings over the Trayvon Martin case? Did those parents of the two white boys get invited to the White House? Did the Justice Department attend their funerals? Where is Al Sharpton and the protesters? Instead, this story was buried. Police brutality is real and racism is real, but they are probably not tied together as closely as much as the media wants you to believe. Instead of people rallying that all lives matter, we have organizations like the National Association for Colored People, Congressional Black Caucus, Black Entertainment, and the National Al Sharpton Action Network leading the charge on just who the racists are, carrying signs that say, Black Lives Matter. Interesting. That people who identify their organizations and voting bias off the color of their skin would be given so much credibility as to where the real racism in America is. I wonder where these groups are 
when an unarmed white man is shot by a police officer. Get your hands out now! Get your hands out! Get your... Get them out! Here is the deal, America. Police brutality is wrong, and we must do everything we can to stop it. There are too many damn laws. People have actually died in this country from just trying to sell cigarettes tax-free. <laughs> but you should also be aware of that if you attack the police, if you fire a gun into the air on a public street, you will justifiably be taken down by the police with a taser, pepper spray, an elbow, a nine millimeter. Or if you're walking down a street towards a building full of people firing a gun, you may even get a special Jack Bauer type ass kicking by a police officer. Of the 117 officers that died last year, one was strangled to death, 48 were shot, 18 died in a physical incident, two drowned and 42 died in a vehicle crash. 10 of which died from being struck by a vehicle. Before you tell a police officer you can't protect yourself, you can't shoot a black person, and that he's a racist, remember that you and I only see the bad stuff when it makes the news. An officer in an inner city, he may witness citizen brutality on a nightly basis. Here you go, Al Sharpton. Here's something you can protest, something you can really get behind. Black lives do matter. And if you only want to focus on race, why don't you start with a new campaign? Stop black on black brutality, because I assure you, this is an epidemic. Not the bad police officers attacking black citizens or the good police officers defending themselves against criminals like Michael Brown who attacked them. Hell, the street! Put the And here is something you can do. Please share this video and go to futuremoneytrends.com. About the, about the uh, police department or the sheriff's department in California that, that did this high tail. Uh, I guess the guy was uh, riding on a horse and he was trying to run from the police. They, they dropped him. They dropped him from the horse and then they're showing all the, all the officers beating on him on, from the helicopter. <laughs> there was no race riots on that one. Yeah. You know, police, the police, no one went to go protest the police department for, for their actions, even though they did wrong. You know. Yep. Did you, yep. did you also see one of the big, one of the main things that ha also when it came to the victims? It was oh. all Hispanics. No yep. Latinos there. Well, that's, yeah. I'm sure that's just. We're the uh, invisible people, except when we get beat. So brown lives don't matter, then? Brown lives don't matter. Yeah, hey, man. Right? Hey, man. <laughs> Try crossing the border. Hey, I, I used to do that. I used yeah. to do that. The last time I did, I actually took my car by mistake. Because mm. it didn't have any, uh, you had to have, I didn't have a, a visa or a passport to go across, across in, uh, into the United States, or to Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've done that, you yeah. know. But I, I told them exactly what I did wrong. They checked my, they, they, they ran my plates, they ran my ID, and back in. Mm -hmm. Let you let the, you get out, huh? Oh yeah. They didn't keep oh, the car. No, oh god, no. I went in. I went into Mexico by mistake, because I had to go drop off a rental vehicle. Yeah. Went into Juarez, seeing all the seeing all the federales with the with the uh, automatic H weapons. And oh my goodness. And then and they keep HKs. Turned around, went you know waited four hours on the uh, on the bridge of the Americas. Went in there and I said, ma'am, I go here's my problem. I said I made the, I made a mistake. I turned around. I, I had to turn around. Mr. Turnabout, here's my ID. Here, and they said, "Where's your plates?" I said, "There it is. You can take a look." That Ten minutes later, I was out. I was in the United. I was free and clear in in, in America. That mm -hmm. is true. All the stuff I got's all about blacks. Yep. <clears throat> From the black community, black perspective. Well, that's why I mentioned, and it had to go all the way back to '74, because there's not, unfortunately, it's not only a black thing. It's you know, it no, it's not. Latinos and then poor mm -hmm. Anglo's. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, black folks get beat up all the time. Yeah, it's class. <clears throat> you know, yeah. If you're, if you're low income, or if uh, unless you're rich, yeah. you stand a chance to get beaten up by the cops if you get stopped. Well, I remember the daily populations at Travis County, and your folks, man, they're not even there. It was like one, 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 one percent or two percent 
Well, they ain't doing anything. Well, well when, it's, when, it's, when it's election time. <laughs> oh, then everybody shows up. Right. Yeah. Then, then they're, you know, we're they're, for they're talking and... about certain things election time. But right now, mm. when stuff is really going on. We have a Republican not... candidate for sheriff. Yeah. Oh, not the same one. No. He runs every He's year. He's not the co-candidate. No. Who is it? Martinez. Joe Martinez. Good show. I like it. I like him already. But y'all need to put money into yeah. it, man. Y'all yeah. just want to. Ah, have you it. seen? Uh, you ain't going to the Reagan Day dinner, are you? Look at, look at Marilyn Jackson. Ah, come on now. And she ran against him when you had O D W I Eddie. Yeah, ten four. That would have been a good time to pump some money so, into. Yeah. yeah, they don't pump money into. I don't think. Yeah. I, I don't think my party's quite as rich as a lot of people think they are. No, I'm not talking about the local party, the national. The national. I'm afraid they're probably not either. Mm. I don't know. I don't. We're not going to the Reagan Day dinner this time, though, like we did last time. It's just a little too expensive, I believe. Mm. It's Unless gotten Cargill really wants more to carry expensive. Us. Huh? It's gotten much more expensive. Lord, I say, you know, last time we rode with Cargill. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that expensive last time. No, you had a whole table. Jeb Bush is in town August 14th. $500. I yeah, I think they've doubled the price or something, it seems like. I think they're just broke. They need money, and they figure, well, yep, charge it to the poor folk. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no poor folks but, in this thing. <laughs> but your your party has money. <laughs> they're gonna have to. Yep. Got to shell out some, you know. If they're gonna have the money, people at this Reagan Day dinner, because we sure ain't going. <laughs> so what's being done to try to improve the, the relationships? I know you and I talked about this a little bit, but what else is being done to try to improve the relationship in East Austin with, with law enforcement or other public officials? There's an, a, a thing that they do once a week um, with uh, the, the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department. They meet uh, at the, um, I can't think of the name of the place on East Austin where a little fun place. They have games and skating and all that stuff. Talking about the Millennium? Millennium Center, yeah. So there's things they do there. Yeah, that's right. There's a, there's also a copy with a cop. Did you ever go to that function? Did they ever have it? Yeah, uh, the safety, safety, uh, Whatever, soccer thing. Yeah. 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 They had it, but I didn't go, of course. I can't, unless I got a babysitter, I can't really go no way either. <laughs> to me, the, uh, again, I, I, I'll go back to the basics. Of, they have to get engaged in the community, with the community. Uh, they give opportunity to community because you guys don't want to. Uh, well, I think no, if they focus on crime, and you know, and, and focus on that, other than some of the other things they're focusing on, I think that'll be a little better. Well, let me share an experience with you, and, and <laughs> it's funny, but it's true. My mom lives in South Austin. She frequently calls APD. She hears noises or disturbances, or you know, and yeah. all she gets is a three one one number right they always give you a number you know as a follow-up you know just in case or whatever but they never show up okay so this one day there was a parked vehicle in front of the house abandoned so the officer saw the door to my mom's house open so he felt he, he said okay i'm gonna go knock at the door and see who knows anything about this car well when he does my mom has a flashback like, hey, remember I called you little <laughs> son of a bitch and you never showed up? And she said, you know what? I don't know who that is, but every time I call, I always get a number. You never show up. But when that white lady across the street calls, you're up here in a New York minute. There you go, now, white you, folks again. Now you get the <laughs> hell out of my house right now. I don't want you in my house. And the officer said, but ma'am, do you know you're speaking to an eye? He said, I don't give a shit. Get out of my house right now. Get off my property. I don't want you here. <laughs> so, yep. but, you know. Uh, if you know his mom, man. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got, the, I got the, 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 the cops. See, they are making efforts to, t I mean, they have Commander's Forum every, every week somewhere. Well, the commander, they got the copy, well, a copy with a cop That's like going to a PCA meeting. You know? Well, what do you want them to do? Come it, out? It, and, it, you it's know. like, the, you know, the other thing they said was going to help the police monitor. What's your opinion of the police monitor? <laughs> what's the opinion? Is it still, what's your name, Worthy Mama? Uh, who, who is it, the former Frago, sheriff? Frago, yeah. Frago. Fraser. Well, Margo Frago, Fraser. Margo yeah. Fraser. See, we were asking. Worthy Mama? We've been, we had been asking, or, yeah, since the 70s. For a civilian review, civil, civilian civilian review, review, board? review board with subpoena power, you know, so that we can bring them in and put them under oath. And if they lie, if they're caught in a lie, then hey man, they, you know, they get they get penalized. 
I, I but, just, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, but instead they came up with this other idea. The uh, liberals, the white liberals, put this out in front. Thanks, for, not, thanks not, for clarify that part. Yeah, white and liberals. they knocked our, 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 our point. They're out. not my people. They're yeah. white, but they're not my people. Well, hey, they look like your people. <laughs> no, my people are Republicans. Oh. I don't care what color they are. Well, I think the best sheriff we've had has been Terry Keel. Yeah, Terry, yeah, I don't Terry, care what color yeah. they are. They got Terry, an R behind their name, that's it. Terry Keel's been the best sheriff. Now, talk about somebody going to the community. That man was in the community. Was he? Yeah. I, I, I think what would make things better in Travis County is if, if we actually merge the Travis County Sheriff's Department with the Austin Police Department and actually make it an elected position as the chief law enforcement officer. So put Travis County Sheriff's you know, Department in charge of that, of APD, like making a metro, metro police, like a in, metro in police Miami, department. Miami, Florida. Right. Well, and, and I think that well, in that way they're, you that person's held. the problem? No. no, that way no. that person's held accountable by the people. He's an elected, elected official. Important. And, also but, elects a so people can, they can elect the police them in, association them is going to let us do that? No. Hell no. I know the chief's been on this show a couple of times, but he sure doesn't seem to like guns in the hands of civilians. Well, that's because he's from California, you know, you know and that's in well, California you know, even today. They, well, at least he's been what, what did LA? You, you see what L.A. did today, right? No. Yeah, well, they, they just did. they banned uh, any magazines over 10 rounds. So now if you have a magazine over 10 rounds in, in Los Angeles, you got to turn it into the police. Oh, that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. And if you don't? If you don't, it's illegal. You get shot. You get shot. Brown, yep. You still get shot. In the city of Los Angeles. Uh, I don't know if we have time. Another little five-minute film. No. But just, uh, we can talk <laughs> over and buy the teens. Uh, no, actually, we're going to be they got to wrap things up in the... In so the that's what you think that will help? Yes, I think that would help a little bit because they're not focusing, they're really not focusing on crime. They're focusing on revenue. Yeah. They're revenue generating. It's all about uh, uh, sitting at intersections and writing block the box tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, <laughs> that's what they're focusing their attention on. Not, you know... You know you're too, a, much. No. You're too much. No. <laughs> <It's laughs> block, it block the box <laughs> tickets. That's what they're focusing their attention on. Here I am, a gun store owner, hey. and I call I call three one one, or I call the Austin Police Department. And I say, hey, I got this guy that just walked in that's trying to sell this gun right here, and then, you know, and it's just lyrics, a little funny to me. Can you guys run this serial number for me? Do you know they will not do it? Yeah, mm. they will not run the serial number of a gun to verify that gun's stolen or been reported stolen. They are useless, completely mm. useless when it comes to solving crimes in this town and most of your gun store owners in this in this county will tell you that i mean we call each other and talk to each other we sit at little different little events and and sit and just rant and rave about it that you know when when it comes down to it when we want to verify if a gun that we have has been reported stolen there's nothing that we can do about it we can't verify it there's no system no one we can call can't call the fbi can't call the atf can't call the the, the austin police department to verify that gun's been reported stolen I'd like to ask you something real quick here if I can't pass. Uh, if you buy a stolen gun, if he turns it in, you don't know what it is, you, and you purchase it, and before you it resell be, it, it, if the cops find out and they will come, be, will they will take be, it? It will become a civil matter. Well, will you get your money back? No, it's a civil matter. Then you so if you to, buy that gun, then you lost your money. you got to turn around and go sue that person you gave that money to. <laughs> he just sold you a hot gun. It, like, you're really going to have It becomes a civil matter. Yeah. So you lost your money. Yeah, there's no, I mean, it's there's rigged, no, and that that can help a lot it's if rigged. we're able to it's verify rigged. that. Well, it's you rigged. know, I was gonna add to uh, spending time on enforcing the what do you call it, the box? Blocking the box. Blocking the box. Mm -hmm. with, uh, sitting in the intersection, writing tickets. No, just, not only sitting there, but with a helicopter observation. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we're good about Nobody that. Twelve hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, tag Damn. it. That's a lot of tickets. Trying to catch speeders. Yeah. Hey, they're making money off of that hand over oh, fist. Yeah. And then with the cell, cell phone use, that's even more. Than oh, the, man, I'll tell you. Even well, more I don't know. How do you like the the recommendation from the chief? It's uh, don't run. And I say, okay, don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, 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 <laughs> don't run. Funny. Hey, don't shoot. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, yeah. So, so but, in other words, what, what, what they want us to do then is just get out of the car. Put our hands on, on top of the uh, top on, the, on top of the car and then just wait. Well, so, that or surrender surrender all your rights and civil liberties and everything. And with, the, with the door open, and with, that with, that the, with the interior fine. light on, so that they can casually look inside your vehicle. Well, the trilateral commission said that you got to get used to that less civil Alec rights. Jones. Yep, less civil rights and tighten your belts because huh? the rough rides are coming. Well, like I say, I've yeah. always been. 
go ahead and cooperate. But they do have a point. If you keep cooperating, well, they just keep like 10 rounds. First, it was no no high capacity magazines that were limited to 10 rounds. And now it's back to taking 10 rounds. If you keep cooperating, like I suggest, then sooner or later, it will be you're free to go as soon as we see your papers. Yeah. Now, I will say that some. Alex Jones is right! So, you know, that some officers, I'm for, you know, in their case, but they look for it, if you will. They're, They're trained to. They entice themselves. I mean, I mean, they run into people two times, three times their age, and they still address them as boy or hey, you know. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that, yeah, that's why I put cameras in my vehicle. So I record, I have two cameras in my ve vehicle that record audio and visual. So, mm. and uh, I'm a, I feel a lot safer that way. I wish I could do something like that. Well, and, uh, but here's the thing, we shouldn't have to go that far. That's true. That's right. You know, we should not have to go yeah. that far. Like you say, they're public employees. Mm -hmm. They're you damn know. well paid. Public you know, yeah. seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. Yep. Did you start off there at what? Forty nine or? Yeah. That'll be a lot people, weird. people will learn. I mean, we have these uh, some. We have elect officials in this county here. Just you know, do not have our best interests at at all. And I wish people will open yeah. up their eyes and see that. You know, I've had to call the police on. You know, uh, a constable, yeah. a sitting constable. Mm. I've had to call mm. the police on a deputy constable mm. and, and ask and tell them they're trespassing to leave my property. You well, know, so I <laughs> people well, people don't understand. We you know, can solve this problem. The Austin Chamber of Commerce. Mm. They run the city. Yeah. So I mean, they can change it if they want. I just blame everything on Democrat trial lawyers. Mm -hmm. Them too. It used to be the cops would tell you put that beer out and go on home, but. Now they get sued no matter what they do, so I yeah. try to see their side too. <laughs> Local and activity. Hellraiser. And Hellraiser. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Paul. All right. Uh, yeah, if we're going to yep. run out of time, then. Coming back, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll be back on the, well, he'll be back on the 27th. Maybe we ought to just bring him back. What are we going to do next week? We don't have a show scheduled. The girl show's been moved to the well, 24th. Me, you, you think we still need to talk about AISD, or that's a. I think Thank we you. should. Can we spend a whole hour talking about ASD? Well, uh, the reason I'm saying, I'm asking, show on that and the reason I'm asking is to invite someone from their office. If they want to come, yeah. If they still like you, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, they love me. Do oh, yeah. They love me. As a matter of fact, we need to go visit them real soon. Even after you push the school choice thing? Because yeah. we're, we're uh, looking at opening an education center. Yeah. That, That's right. The that one that your folks are going to help me, too. Ten That's four. why we're trying to get to George Bush. And this, it's interesting because, you know, you know, in our community, when when governments want to build a jail, they're all over you. Hey, come on, come on, sign off on this, sign off on this. You know, like Earl uh -huh. Ronnie Earl said when you know that jail out there by the Travis Expo, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he 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 called us up. Marco was in office, called us up, wanted us to support that jail going out there. That way, our grandmothers wouldn't have to go all the way to Houston. Mm. I said, hey, that's what he said. Yeah. yeah, support the jail. So you. Know. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's the first trip. I said, yeah. now, yeah. now in this case, we're trying to get people to help fund and and because we're going to bring it's all about, uh, it's all about privatization, a right? uh, education center, mm -hmm. and I want to see everybody in uh, running. Education yeah, center. yeah, to do that. But that's one of the parts I like about New Black. Y'all are. Well, that's right. I got my, I gotta pay my white feet. boy Lulac plaque. I got to pay my hey, feet you, I need to get yeah. your... No, you're covered. I already got your $40 for Lulac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to help a brother out? Oh, oh yeah, you're going to help no, the white man. You're going to help the white man, but not, not, not a brother over here. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> politi hey, it's politically oh, correct to have you in there. Our, uh, Latino Limba. Our Latino Limba. Limba, all right. There you go. Yeah, he's a Rush Limba Latino version. He ran off at Heffin. Huh? We're off. We're, We're off the, the, the time.